So in the photoelectric effect, we have a uh, sample. And we're shooting light. We're shooting light at the sample. Okay, now the light carries energy. So when the light hits the sample, it can shake things loose out of the sample. In particular, it can shake electrons loose out of the sample. And then the electrons can go shooting off in this direction. to use the squiggle here for the light, and I'll use the solid line for the electrons. One thing that um, is going to come up in a lot of the applications here, we're going to do a lot of applications that have both light and electrons, and it's important not to confuse them. So those are two different things. One big difference is that light doesn't have any mass, whereas electrons have a mass even though it's very small. So they're definitely different things. Well, this is the, uh, the basis of the photoelectric effect right here. If you shoot light at a sample, uh, it, it has enough energy to uh, pry the electrons out, and then the electrons go shooting off. We can already see why this is called the photoelectric effect, because remember that photo is Latin or Greek for light, and electric means refers to the electrons. So this is showing how the, pho um, uh, how the light, the photons, are shaking loose the electrons. All right, now when the photoelectric effect was first conducted, everyone thought at that time that light was a wave. So let's see how a wave would uh, impact uh, the sample over here. Let's review the idea of the uh, intensity and power of the wave. So I think as we've gone over there a couple times, but it's a kind of a confusing concept. Intensity is going to be a key idea here. Remember, you can symbolize that with an I or a uh, S. Let's just remind ourselves, do you remember what the units are for intensity? Uh, if we know the units, we really know what it's measuring. Isn't it power over time? Power over seconds? And do you remember... Over seconds. Let's go back to power then. Watt. Why don't we actually uh, review these ideas? Energy and work. What's the relationship between power and energy or work? So energy and work is joules. Power right. Is so what power is uh, joules every second? A watt is joules per second. Good. So what would be the formula that would relate these? Um, energy over time. So is the power. I'm going to say the power is the work over the time, but we know that the work tends to tell you the change in energy. So these can kind of be interchangeable in some problems. The power is the work or the energy over the time. Now, if you know the power, how do you find the intensity? Now, what you were thinking was that the intensity was power over time, but we've already taken the count, taken the time into account. What's the thing we haven't taken into account? Area. Right. So, it's power over area. Good. There's no special name for the unit for intensity. What would be the units? Watts. Watts over, yeah, meters squared, because that's the unit for area. Okay. Uh, let's break this down a little bit more, though. What is a watt? So how, how could we break this down by breaking down a watt? What would this so be? So joules over a second, um, and
Okay, and the key thing is to use the units to interpret the intensity. So how would we interpret this intensity? Um, this intensity of light. For, uh, one That's right. Okay, yeah, that's a good interpretation. So as you're recalling, the trick that we've been using is it useful to have a number in front of every unit. Um, well, what number can we put in front of these units without changing the fraction of the number one? Now, the example we gave before was solar panels. We imagined building a one square meter solar panel and leaving out in the sunlight for one second, and we saw that it would absorb eight joules of energy, which would be enough to do eight joules of work if there was uh, no loss. But now we can start putting this in terms of the photoelectric effect. Suppose that we have um, a one square meter sample. Well, if we have a one square meter sample and we expose it uh, for one second, it should be absorbing eight joules of energy from the light. So that's a very practical interpretation because it seems like, remember, the more energy we're absorbing, the more electrons we should kick off. The whole point of the photoelectric effect is to measure how many electrons is the light able to push off and how energetic will the electrons be. Well, this seems like the information that will tell us how many electrons we can kick off and how energetic uh, the electrons are going to be. Okay, um, so basically the intensity is a way of telling you how much energy is being delivered per time per area. The intensity is telling you how much, so the intensity is telling you basically how much energy the light is delivering. The intensity is telling you how much energy the light is delivering. But of course, how much energy is being delivered is a function of how much time the light is on and how much area it's illuminating. So the intensity is in terms of the time and the area. Um, I, I guess it's just a historical coincidence that when we're building up these concepts, first we divide the energy by time and when you, then we divide by area. You could, you could have done it a different way where first we had a concept which was work over area and then we could have divided that by time. The key thing is that this is energy in a certain time in a certain area. Um, and that's definitely an important concept here. If we want to know how many electrons are getting kicked off, we need to know how long the light is hitting the sample and how big the sample is. Because clearly, the longer the electrons hit the sample, I'm sorry, the longer the photons hit the sample, the longer the light hits the sample, you would imagine that would deliver more energy and would get more electrons. And also, if the sample is bigger, we would imagine that um, you would be absorbing more energy. If the whole thing was being illuminated by light, then the bigger it is, the more energy it absorbs, and again, the more electrons get kicked off. Okay. So this is simply a way of relating the energy to the time and uh, the area. So in terms of using the intensity, I think that the key thing is just to remember that it's energy over time over area. Energy over time over area. Okay, so let's see if we can get a prediction here. Um, suppose we increase the intensity of the light. Would you expect that that would give us more electrons or fewer electrons? We increase the intensity of the light. Would we get more electrons, pride free, or fewer? More, more because they'll be delivering more energy. amount of energy to get the electrons off of the sample over here. It takes a certain amount of energy to get the electrons off of the sample. That's what's called the work function. So let's introduce that idea of the work function here. So let's say the work function here would be 5 electron volts. By the way, here's another complication. Um, do you know what concept is measured in electron volts? This is a little tricky. Work and energy. Okay, that's right. But what concept is measured in volts? Um, uh, so this takes us back to the beginning of the yeah. semester. So the volts would measure the potential, or the potential difference. Basically what you're saying is, this is a measure of potential energy. This is a measure of potential energy, but this is a measure of potential. 
I think we talked about how it was a very poor choice of names when the scientists picked the names for these concepts. They called this concept potential, and they called this concept potential energy. So those names are so similar, it's hard to remember they're two different things. But potential and potential energy are really two different things. Volts are a measure of potential. So, uh, but notice electron volts are a measure of energy. So again, it's very easy to get confused about the distinction between those.